actually had had not intended to um, uh, bring together um, the Jewish practice in my life with environmental work um, until um, until at some point during college I was in an introductory environmental studies class and it was taught by um, an amazing professor, um, uh, David Orr, who is also the son of a preacher, and, um, and, and spoke so passionately about where he was coming from um, that it made me think very seriously about dedicating my work to, um, to teaching and to working specifically around issues of climate and um, resource consumption. Um, and then I heard about Teva, and I went and got to teach in the woods for a while and um, found myself eventually over these last five years um, living in D.C., directing Teva's congregational and community programs. Um, so now I get to um, really have the inspiration of working with many congregations, not just kids from schools, but families, clergy, um, boards, <laughs> um, to help them think about how to, how to go green. Um, and one of the... Um, one of the very inspiring congregations I've worked with is um, that of um, Rabbi Fred Sherlander Dobbs, who is the rabbi who was speaking in there about Adama and Adam, about those two Hebrew words of sort of earthling and earth. Um, so I, many things have inspired me, but um, now I feel blessed to be in D.C. and, um, and, and building um, Jewish and, and multi-faith environmental um, networks of action here. Well, first of all, thanks for putting this together, the, the blue bars. I was really inspired by what you all are doing, as well as what we saw tonight. And I'm really interested to talk more about Tevin and learn more about what you do. Because I think all of that was very, very inspiring. And uh, I think my personal journey was one of um, not so much a light bulb going off. Uh, I think that Part of one of the threads you heard from all the re religions that were speaking was this idea of connectedness, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that I mean, I'm I'm a Muslim, but that's one thing from our religious tradition is the idea that everything is connected, all of creation, really. And uh, the way I like to describe what really, I guess, talking about what I do, you know, in, with regards to uh, sustainably raised and uh, food that's uh, that's treated with respect, as I like to say, one of the things that really I think was uh, pivotal is that we were having our, our second child and at that point we were already you know we, we, we did our birth through midwives we were maybe what you might term alternative but uh, what happened that was interesting is my wife got an email about I don't know has anyone ever seen the matrix have you heard of that yeah. it's something worth watching you know the matrix obviously right <laughs> it was the matrix it's basically the matrix but it's talking about it's a cartoon and it's talking about the animals how they're raised and everything so the more we learned about how animals were raised the hormones, the antibiotics, all of that type of stuff. You know, we said we wanted to make sure that our kids and ourselves that we ate from food that was uh, raised in a way that didn't have any of, the, any of those health implications. But even more importantly, from a spiritual perspective, because I think that's what religion in general brings to the table in these discussions, is that, as someone mentioned on there, it's not even about the food you eat and the health, how it affects you from your, you know, from your health perspective and the nutrition, but really from a, from a spiritual perspective how it affects you. And one of the things that I was going to say that I'd like to ask as a question before, you know, when we talk about this is, you know, who do you feed cat food to? Cats. Cats. Who do you feed dog food to? Dogs. Who do you feed junk food to? <laughs> <laughs> you feed it to humans or people who think that they are junk, right? Mm. And so one of the core things in all of this, from, from my belief, is that when we as people understand our worth, that we were miraculous creations, from my perspective, of God. And when we die, we have a noble end as well. So if someone believes their beginning is wondrous and their end is noble, that kind of means your middle is worth something as well, right? Again, that's my perspective. So uh, those are some some thoughts, perhaps, on, on some of the. It's a big question that you asked. Yeah. <laughs> those are just just some thoughts, I suppose. Yeah. 